Hello there, it's a new month, a new season, and at long last, a change to the weather type. Something a bit quieter, less wet, after what has been an exceptionally wet autumn. Now this map here is the latest data from the Met Office showing the rainfall anomalies of the whole autumn season, September, October, November, compared to the long-term average. And you can clearly see the blue areas here indicating where the rainfall was well above average. You can see the key here on the right-hand side. There's a lot of variation across the UK. England had its fifth wettest autumn on record, but parts of South Yorkshire, Nottinghamshire, Lincolnshire, essentially the bullseye of this dark blue area here, they all broke their all-time record for the autumn season, which beats their previous record set in 2000, of course. But you'll also notice stark contrast here to Western Scotland and parts of Northwest England, including the Northern Isles as well. This part of the UK, which is often the wettest part of the UK, has actually had quite a bit of dry weather through the autumn season. Uh, and we talked a little bit about that last week in the farming forecast as well. And that shows up quite clearly here with well below average rainfall. Now, Northwest Scotland had its wettest summer on record and it's now just had one of its top 30 driest autumns. So quite a change really from the summer months to the autumn months in this part of the world. But I suspect we will balance things out once again over the next seven days. In fact, this is just one model's idea about how much rain might fall over the next six days to the end of Sunday this coming weekend. And you can clearly see here the bulk of the wet weather this week, accumulatively over many days, will be across west of Scotland uh, northwest England, North Wales as well, and, and some respite across these eastern parts of the UK that are more typically drier than those on the western side of the hills as well. So we're sort of getting back to normal, if you like, over the next few days. But we've all had some dry weather over the last few days, and for the southern areas, that will continue for another couple of days at least. So it's all changed, and why is that? Well, as is often the case, it's due to the jet stream. Quite a convoluted pattern right now, lots of ridges and troughs in the jet stream, very sort of amplified pattern. Right now, we're stuck underneath this uh, upper ridge, which promotes high pressure. It means things are relatively settled, it's mainly dry, but we did bring in some cold air, so it's actually quite chilly with overnight frost, a little bit of fog, that sort of thing as well. But over the next few days, it will change. Watch how this rather amplified pattern very quickly becomes much more flat and zonal, as we call it, driving areas of low pressure across the Atlantic towards the UK. So we've lost that sort of ridge trough pattern. It's a much more west-east lined up jet as we head through the latter part of this week and into the weekend, which means it will turn more unsettled uh, as we go through the next few days or so. But as I say, still some dry weather in the south for another couple of days at least. High pressure then, this was overhead earlier on this week. It's been gradually clearing off to the east over the last couple of days or so, and in doing so, we'll eventually allow weather fronts to come in. So there'll be some rain pushing into Scotland. Notice this front fizzles out as it moves into that high pressure. So actually it's the second front coming in that will eventually get some of that rain down into the south and the east of the UK. But here's the scene by Thursday, more isobars, so quite blustery, but still dry across southern areas. Wetter though across much of northern and northwestern parts of the UK. And as I say, there could be quite a bit of rain actually piling up onto those uh, western upslopes of Scotland, which we mentioned in last week's farming forecast, of course. And then towards the end of the week, this front, a cold front, finally gets a move on. So we'll all see some rain, some strong winds as well on Friday. And then we get a shot of northwesterly air behind it. So cooler conditions spreading down behind that front later in the day on Friday into Saturday. That'll bring showers to the usual exposed places in the north and the west. Ridge building in late Saturday, a very brief respite perhaps for a time, some point on Saturday night, uh, but very quickly the next Atlantic front comes in, perhaps a bit of snow over the hills initially. Uh, so a wet start on Sunday, some blustery strong winds as well, that will clear through. And then yet again, back into a run of northwesterlies with showers. And again, some of those will be wintry on the hills in the north as well. So it's very much a chop and change really for the end of the week, very changeable with rain and showers coming and going with very brief ridges. Now here's the pattern for the early part of next week. And once that front on Sunday clears out of the way, we get a shot of northwesterly and then perhaps another very weak ridge building in for the beginning of next week. So Monday may not be too bad, subject to timing change, but we think a little ridge will move through at some point early part of next week before yet again the next area of low pressure with perhaps a bit of snow on the leading edge across some of those northern hills as well. But the pattern's likely to change a little bit come the middle part of next week. Again, don't take the detail literally, this is just a sort of most likely scenario of using just one of many uh, computer models we look at. But notice low pressure pretty much over the UK, but we are wrapping a lot of cold air around it coming out of the Arctic around the backside of this low. So it gets modified as it crosses the warm waters of the Atlantic, but still it's a pretty chilly air mass 
There'll be spells of rain, if not showers around, most frequent around the coast that are exposed to the winds, but they will move inland at times as well. And as you can see, there will be a bit of snow in some of these showers too. Now the beginning of the week, that's most likely across the hills in the north, but actually later on in the week, things might get a little bit colder still. And so the risk of snow perhaps coming down to some lower levels, especially in the north, but wouldn't want to rule out a little bit of snow in a few places perhaps across southern parts of the UK, depending on how things play out. And then towards the very end of next weekend, so we're talking around the 15th of December onwards, it's likely that will start to clear away. Another very weak ridge coming in. And then it does look like sometime around the end of next weekend, early part of the following week, we'll get an Atlantic front coming in. So after a week of quite cold weather dominated by showery conditions, a more organized spell of Atlantic weather coming in, some rain here, some leading edge snow for some parts of the UK perhaps, but actually a return to something a bit less cold. As you can see, the flow is all the way back out across the Atlantic. So no longer a northerly, it's more of a straight westerly or even a west-southwesterly. So temperatures should recover a little bit for the week after next. To show that in a little bit more detail, here's an ensemble for Bedford. Of course, each line represents a different computer model. Uh, there's a link here on the video just above uh, to what, what are ensembles, how do we use them, what do they show us, ensemble forecasting explainer for you. But what this does show is quite topsy-turvy over the next couple of days. These spikes in the temperature at 850 millibars, about a mile above the ground, represent slight wedges of mild air coming in ahead of each weather front. So there'll be a slight lift in temperature on Friday, here you can see for Bedford, another little spike here at some point late Saturday as well, as some slightly mild air gets drawn in ahead of each weather front. Once that front goes through late Sunday though, notice we go down below this dashed black line, which is the average or climatology for the time of the year. So there's quite a strong signal here from through much of next week really for below average temperatures here. And we don't really go back above average until probably the very end of next weekend, but more especially into the following week. Now again, there's a lot of noise, a lot of lines here, so it's hard to pull out the detail too much, but the overall trends, this red line here is just the average of all of these gray lines, uh, does suggest towards the beginning of next week, so sometime around the 15th, 16th, of December, give or take a couple of days. It looks like temperatures might recover slightly back close to or maybe even a touch above average by that stage. But until then, quite a long spell of fairly chilly or even cold conditions and unsettled conditions as well, as opposed to the settled cold that we've had over the last few days. So there's gonna be a lot of detail to iron out through the course of the next 10 to 15 days. The best way to keep on top of that is to give our team of forecasters a ring here at WeatherQuest. We're available every single day, including the weekends, six in the morning till six in the evening. And we're looking at all of this data and much more uh, to keep across the latest uh, information. And we can give you the forecast for your particular part of the world, stress the uncertainties, and ho hopefully give you some important advice so you can make some plans going forward. So here's the bigger picture then for that second week. This is the 9th to the 15th of December. Quite a strong signal here for below average pressure. Notice the blues here, lower than normal pressure. It covers most of Europe. The track of the lows will be crossing the UK and then pushing up towards the Baltic area as we go through this week with a succession of low pressures coming in. So what does that mean? Well, it means if you're south of the low track, you have above average temperatures because we've got some fairly mild air being drawn up from the south. If you're north of the low tracks, you're in very cold air coming down from the north, hence this very strong anomaly for below average temperatures across Scandinavia and indeed extending across the central and northern parts of the UK as well. And of course, with low pressure dominating, it's going to be very wet across a good chunk of Europe here with rain or showers and snow over the mountains. But actually with quite a strong easterly wind, northern Scandinavia here might actually end up quite below average in terms of rainfall because the low tracks are much further south than they normally are for the time of the year. Now on in towards the middle of uh, December, notice the signal for low pressure is weaker across parts of Europe. It's still there, still lower than normal, but it's starting to recede somewhat. A bit more of a Scandi high trying to develop here. Low pressure though still very much dominating across Western Europe, so still it's going to be fairly wet here. In terms of temperature though, because we're losing that low pressure across central and eastern parts of Europe, temperatures are starting to recover. More of a southerly or southeasterly flow developing means above average temperatures likely here during the middle part of December. Still though quite cold across Scandinavia and also across parts of northern parts of the UK. But we are recovering those temperatures across southern UK with more of an Atlantic southwesterly trying to uh, take over the low tracks a little bit further north. In terms of rainfall, again, still very wet across Western Europe. 
notice here, but starting to dry out across Central and Eastern Europe, including Scandinavia, where higher pressure continues to build. And that continues to be the case then into the latter part of December. This is Christmas week, of course, High, higher than normal pressure across Scandinavia, extending down across much of Europe. Low pressure, no longer close to the UK, just starting to be pushed further out towards the West. So things becoming a bit more blocked, we think, for the week of Christmas, which means less in the way of unsettled weather, potentially. A better chance, perhaps, of something quieter, less wet, shall we say. Uh, and temperatures perhaps recovering a bit across the heart of Europe here. Just a hint of near or maybe even slightly above average temperatures across the UK, but a long way out uh, at this stage. And in terms of rainfall, there is a trend here. You can see the browns showing up here now for much of Europe to have actually near or below average rainfall during this week in particular. So it is a signal that things may calm down towards the Christmas week. But to summarise the next few weeks across the UK, the next couple of days at least will be fairly chilly across southern parts, but it will be mainly dry because that high pressure just about uh, holds on. But it will turn increasingly wet across northern parts of the UK and that will extend across all parts of the UK from Friday onwards. So quite blustery at times, some strong winds, some rain as well, but equally some brief ridges such as uh, late on Sunday. Uh, which may settle things down. Cold and unsettled then through much of next week and I, there will be some snow in places, particularly to say on northern hills, but later in the week don't be surprised if some snow may crop up further south as well. Something to keep an eye on, but I don't think it'll last too long. Uh, and then gradually turning less cold but still an unsettled flavour through from mid-December onwards, although perhaps something a little bit drier as we head towards Christmas week itself. In terms of the big day, this is just a very brief overview. It's a long way out at this stage, uh, but this is just a couple of maps to show you what the uh, ensemble data is telling us for that three-day period between Christmas Eve and Boxing Day, averaged out for temperature. And what you see here on the left is the percent chance of temperatures being above average by two and a half degrees, compared to that same chance of temperatures being two and a half degrees below average. And there is a stronger signal at the moment for temperatures to be above average than below. Doesn't necessarily mean it will be a mild Christmas because there are still some members going for a below average uh, temperature period through the Christmas period. But overall, it's more likely as things stand right now to be above average than below average. But Lots to chop and change between now and then. We will keep a very close eye on it over the next few weeks. And as ever, you can keep up to date with the latest forecast by following us on social media.